When we think of wildlife rescue, we often think of the larger species that can find themselves in some sort of trouble. However, the UK is home to a huge variety of creatures, not forgetting the smaller ones that need the same amount of dedicated care. Here at Secret World Wildlife Rescue in Somerset, the dedicated team will rescue over 5,000 animals and birds each year. This includes foxes, otters, birds of prey and badgers, most of which will be hand reared and cared for prior to release, sometimes for as long as 18 months. But soon after we'd arrived, we were told they had some more unusual species currently in their care, one being a juvenile swift. Each year, the team take in around 100 swifts, mostly juveniles that have fallen from the nest. Young swifts will be fed insect prey by their mother, so the team here have to hand feed them until they can be released. So Dan, tell us a little bit about what you do here at Secret World. So I'm a section leader here at Secret World, um, so I oversee a lot of the care of, of the animals that we have in the wildlife casualties along with the rest of the team so making sure that they're looked after and cleaned out and fed and have the right medication etc and also you know sort of supervise other members of the team in doing so. You have so many different species coming in and we've seen that well you've got a swift at the moment haven't you? We have yes we've got one swift left <laughs> of, we've had quite a few in this year but yeah we've just got one left who, who needs to get on his way really and get back to Africa. The most sort of challenging thing about swifts is they feed completely on the wing. They fly around and catch insects in their really large mouth and they've got a very small beak as well. So actually in captivity they can't feed themselves from a dish um, or from a bowl like most of our casualties can. So actually we have to hand feed swifts through the whole time that they're here. So if we get a, a little hatchling come in, you know, who's not long out of the egg, then that's quite a few weeks then of actually intensively hand feeding him waxworms, mealworms, crickets every few hours um, to get him up to weight and ready for release. Given their huge migration to Africa each year, swifts face a multitude of threats along the way, which has affected numbers. But due to ongoing development, they have lost insect prey as well as roosting sites, which is having a devastating effect on the species. So tell us a bit about the process from when you rescue a swift to caring for it to eventually releasing it. So when a swift um, first comes into us, normally they come in as juveniles, often because they've fallen out of the nest. So then we, we sort of assess them when they come in to make sure that they're not injured or don't have any other problems. We then start the hand rearing process, which is feeding every couple of hours. We use waxworms and mealworms and crickets to try and give them a good balance sort of insect-based diet. Obviously, we can't replicate exactly what they have in the wild because they'd normally be fed on lots of different flying insects, but using those things with a bit of um, sort of mineral and vitamin supplement as well, that does, does seems to do a good job of rearing them and then once they're up to a good weight between about 40 and 50 grams and their feather development is good and they're sort of getting ready to go they start to um, refuse food and generally drop a little bit of weight when they're getting ready to go and then we attempt the release so we'll take them to a, a large open space we've got some grass fields here so that there's a soft landing if they don't don't successfully fledge and like a lot of the other birds that we rear here we can't test fly swifts in an aviary or allow them that sort of aviary time because once they fledge in the wild they're, they're in the air then for um, up to two years can be before they'll come back down to, to nest so we do have to just give them the opportunity to go and once they're gone then, they, then they're gone. Um, most of the time it's successful sometimes they need a few attempts um, to go but we basically just hold them up in the air let the wind take, get under their wings um, and then take themselves off. Swifts only spend around three months each summer here in the UK. And sadly, with their numbers becoming lower and lower, they need all the help they can get. Whilst chatting with Dan, he told us they had some more rather unusual patients currently in their care. So we went to take a look. The UK is home to 19 species of bat. And here the team rescue around 100 each year mostly juveniles that have run into some sort of trouble. Brown long-eared bats are strictly nocturnal and will emerge from their roost site about an hour after sunset, only flying in the pitch dark. And despite being the second most common bat species in the UK, seeing one close up is incredibly rare. 
I can't believe how small she is. <laughs> she's quite small. Yeah, they are. They're one of the smaller species that we have. They're, they're bigger than pipistrelles. And her ears are fascinating, aren't they? They are, yeah. I mean, they use the ears as um, to sort of hear insects and things in flight and to when they're echolocating to hear the, um, the signals that come back to them. Um, so they've got these large sort of sensitive ears, which are really useful for them when they're hunting. Weighing in at between 6 to 12 grams, they are one of our smallest bat species found in the UK, with their ears being nearly as big as their bodies. They are easy to identify due to their unmistakable ears, which they use to find prey and communicate through echolocation. And when they sleep, they tuck their ears under their wings. Looks like she's ready to... She run. is going to take off in a sec. Is she going to take yeah, off? Yeah, she is. <laughs> Loss of insect prey as well as roosting space has had a huge negative effect on UK bat species. So getting the bats up to a healthy weight is vital for their survival in the wild. But Dan also needs to make sure they don't become too overweight. That evening Dan took us for a practice flight with some soprano pipistrels in their care. When the bats first arrive, the team will give them some good rest and food to get their strength up before they test fly. But this is a vital part of their rehabilitation and assessment. If they are flying well with strong reactions, they will be released soon. But if not, the team will keep them in their care until they are ready. The bats have their test flights in a special room with hanging towels. Having obstacles in the bat's flight path is highly important as Dan can assess the bat's reactions during flight and also assess how well they are echolocating, which is crucial for their survival in the wild. But test flying bats can prove a bit of a runaround. This type of flight is exactly what Dan wants to see and these soprano pipistrels are ready to get back out into the wild on the next clear night. A couple of days later, the team gave us a call as the young swift we'd seen a few days prior was ready to be released, so we went along. After spending the last few weeks being hand-fed and cared for, he has put on enough weight and is strong enough to face the big outside world. Sometimes they need a little encouragement to get into the sky, but after a few seconds, he finally makes it up into the air. And thanks to the team, this young swift will hopefully one day return back here to Somerset to the same nest site to sire his very own young swifts. So that's it, another swift back into the wild where he belongs. And he will spend the next two years of his life on the wing, eating and sleeping. 